Hi there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today I would actually like to do an analysis on Shopify, a company that's actually fallen a significant amount within these past couple months or so and I know that it had earnings on Thursday, I'm a little bit late on this but nonetheless we can still make an analysis on this and see what we would prefer to pay for a company that has fallen a decent amount ever since. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. We are going to come right into the calculator guys because Shopify does not actually have any dividends. Ticker symbol of SHOP shop market cap of $47.5 billion. A tiny PE guys, just a little bit tiny. You know, this could be a little bit smaller, but PE is currently at 304 on the dot with a current share price of $377.50. It's pretty much just telling me that, yeah, this is still very, very expensive. Now, with this current share price of 377 you guys are probably wondering, like, well, 377 is significantly expensive. However, let's just put this into perspective. Within the past five days, Shopify has actually fallen from a high of $487.20 all the way up to the current price of 377 And if you actually find that surprising, looking at this on the year to date, well, they were at about, what, $1,366.52. That is a drop, guys, of 72.31% year to date, which is just absolutely incredible. And in fact, we can actually take a look at the 52-week high. And we can see that the 52-week high is actually $1,762. As you guys can see right here on the year, this is down 65.4%, which is massive. And this isn't even taking into account the 52-week high of $1,762. So even with this current share price of 377 the PE is still 304 Imagine what this PE was when it was like $1,700. Yeah, that is just how much overvalued these tech companies were and even though we have seen a significant drop within these past couple months or so it is still way 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 overvaluated now they do not pay a dividend which means that their five-year average free cash flow or just their cash flow in general is going into themselves to pay down their debt to buy back shares and to of course reinvest in themselves Now let's make some analysis when it comes to their fundamentals, starting off with their net income five years ago of negative $40 million to one year ago, guys, of, look at this, $3 billion. That is an increase of 7,000, 7,387%. 7, wow. I, I don't even, I just, there's just nothing to say. This is just incredible to see. And a lot of people will say, see, see, it's growing, it's growing. Yeah, this is not, this is... This is not normal. This is not normal and B, this is not healthy either. You just went from negative 40 million to $3 billion in just one fell swoop. And not even just that, taking a look at this two years ago, sure they were up $319.5 million and then it just shot up to, to 3 billion. This is one of those instances that this outlier, I would just essentially ignore, right? I would just have to ignore it because it is an outlier. We have no idea what's it going to be like when it comes to the actual fundamentals when it comes to this year. We have seen these tech companies give really, really bad guidance. And for all we know, this actually might come down once this thing moves over one to the right and we get this year's numbers as well. Look at now the free cash flow. We see something very, very similar too. Guys, this is the cash of operations less your capital expenditures. This from five years ago of negative $12.1 billion to one year ago, guys, of $453.6 million. It's an increase of 3,849%. Average for your free cash flow of $164 million. Now, you guys are probably saying, wow, that's actually incredible. Yeah, except that this number isn't positive. Right? The only reason why this five year average free cash was positive is because you had such big outliers two years ago and one year ago, right? If you were to just ignore these two numbers, this n number would technically be negative. And as you can see, these are outliers. You can't just go from 13.8 million to 383 million in one year. It's not feasibly logical for something to jump this high in just one year. Now, did it happen? Of course, and this is why I'm still saying it. However, it's not logical. The chances of this continuing up in this direction, highly unlikely because at this point, well, as I said, guidance is looking really, really bad when it comes to these companies. Look at now at their revenue. This one is the only one that kind of looks okay. Five years ago of $673 million to one year ago of $4.6 billion. That's an increase of 585%. And even though I just said this looks logical, I just said it looks logical mainly because of the fact that it's 
at least you don't have any significant outliers. Now, the revenue is looking significantly better just because it is steadily growing however in my personal opinion it is still way too unprobable for this to continue within the next four years look at now the total assets minus total liability if they were to liquidate all of the assets would they be able to a cover their liabilities and by how much and currently to their credit guys if they were to do this they would be at 9.8 billion dollars in the positive and not only that they have been positive in the past five years as well average total assets around 8.4 billion average total liabilities around 1.4 billion doing the average assets minus the average liabilities we got around 7 billion dollars now coming over here to the shares outstanding this is the metric that usually companies tend to fail especially younger companies like shopify well as you can see right here Five years ago, they were at 110.4 million shares to one year ago of 126 million shares. Guys, that is an increase of 14% on the five year. And from the previous year to the current year, I'm looking at two years ago to one year ago, this is an increase of almost a tenth of a percent. So as it stands, guys, they're diluting you to no end. And probably this is how they are paying down their debt is by just issuing shares, especially since they were probably like, our stock price is $1,700, man, we need to sell some of this. We need to just issue shares because this is way over, we are not worth $1,700. So yeah, as it stands, they're diluting you really, really bad metric. And lastly, cash and equivalents. Currently they have $2.5 billion in cash equivalents with an average cash around $1.9 billion. Now let's make some assumptions, low, median, high, three different factors, revenue growth, predictorship buyback, and required rate of return. Guys, for the revenue growth, I'm gonna be using Seeking Alpha's revenue growth tab, looking at the revenue growth year over year and the revenue growth forward and making a conservative assumption between those two numbers. This one was very, very high, but again, I have to be conservative. My goal as an investor is to be conservative conservative with my assumptions as to where the future cash flow will be and then try to find a company that is under that right meeting that expectation or or under that undervalued essentially for the predicted share buyback I'm going to be using the shares outstanding graph that we just saw and for the required rate of return keep it flat at 10% to match the S&P 500 so for my lowest assumption let's say a revenue growth of 18% Predictor should buy back of negative 10%. This means that they will continue to issue shares at negative 10% within the next four years. With these two assumptions, we get a target share price not adjusting for debt of $30.22. From a median assumption, let's say a revenue growth of 20%. Predictor should buy back of negative 8%. This is $32.79. And from highest assumption, a revenue growth of 22%, predicted share buyback of negative 6%. This is $35.56. Now let's adjust for debt. And the way we do this is cash equivalents and the net debt. If we add these two together and they have more debt than cash, this number comes down. If they have more cash than debt, then this number comes up. So you can clearly see it does come up all the way up to $78.06 for my lowest assumption, $83.55 for my median assumption, and $89.44 for my highest assumption. Now, I personally like to add a margin of safety just because I don't want to overpay for something. And in doing so, adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%, I would like to buy between $66.35 to $74.16 for my lowest assumption. For my media assumption, $71 all the way up to $79.38 for the media assumption. And for my highest assumption, $76.03 to almost $85. Guys, the current share price is $377. And we just saw the PE. The PE is $304, right? So the fact that this needs to fall, what, like... $340 or so, yeah, it kind of does make sense as to why the PE is that high and my assumptions are this low, right? Even adjusting for debt, and apparently they have more cash than debt, this is still a significant lower amount than what it currently is, right? Now, again, guys, these are just my assumptions. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this because, well, you're probably saying, like, how could this possibly fall, like, to, to $30 or, or $89 or whatever? Let me just put it into perspective. The 52-week high, $1,700, $1,762, almost $1,763. So it has already fallen, right? It has already fallen, what, like $1,400 or so? Yeah, the fact that it can't drop to 35 is just ludicrous to me, right? It has already fallen $1,400. Of course, it could drop down to around $78, $89, $30, right? Especially seeing that the PE is 304 and that their guidance is actually really, really bad. So just because this seems 
illogical doesn't necessarily mean that it is right because it has already happened now as I always say in every single video, guys, these are just my assumptions. All of these ones right here, my assumptions. I'm basing this off of what I believe this company will be in the future and as to how overvaluated this actually is. If you do not agree with my assumptions, then you can have this calculator. It's available for free. Anybody can have it. It's available in my calculators playlist and there's videos and how to use it. And there's also a dividend tracking sheet as well. If you do not believe that Shopify will grow at 22%, let's say that you actually believe what Seeking Alpha is saying, they'll grow at around like 75% and that you think that, you know, they're going to actually buy back shares in the future and you say that they're going to buy back shares at 2%. Well, as you can see right here, these numbers are already somewhat making sense as to the current share price, right? $323 adjusting for debt. Now, obviously, to me, this is really, really not likely because, again, we haven't seen the, the track record of them buying back shares and the chances of them growing the revenue growth 75% again in four years, very, very unlikely, right? So that's just my, my reasoning as to why I'm putting it this low because to me it doesn't make sense if to you it makes sense then by all means get this calculator all I'm asking for in return guys for these two free calculators this one the book value one and the dividend tracking sheet is like subscribe comment and just help me grow my channel that's all I'm asking for in return and of course tell your friends right we're up to what 572 subscribers amazing I would love to get to a thousand by the end of the year that would be awesome all in all guys when it comes to Shopify this company is overvalued, right? It, it just is. There's just nothing else to say here. It's overvalued. I'm personally not even buying it at 200, right? Or 100. No, this needs to fall at around like 50 to $60 in order for me to justify it. And even then it doesn't pay a dividend. So it's already outside of my wheelbarrow, maybe for a growth portfolio. If I had one, you know, I would take this into account, but at least for me, again, this, none of this was financial advice. All of these numbers that I've shown you guys with the fundamentals is public information. And my assumptions are based off of, again, my assumptions, right? Not yours, not financial advice. But at least for me, I would not be buying it at this current share price. It is way too expensive. And guidance is showing that this will continue to fall. That pretty much is it for this video. Like the video, like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm here on YouTube. As I said, you guys can follow me on my new tech site, Bitchu Other Sim Rumble. I also have a Let's Play channel. Link in the description below, which I promise I will upload this weekend. Um, again, something happened in the game that I just couldn't, I just couldn't proceed. But hopefully I will proceed this weekend. And with that said, I will see you all in the next stock analysis of video.